Hello everyone. How are we doing today? I thought today we would do a story time. I thought I would read you a short story. Uh, so, let's, I'm going to read you this one. This is from uh, a book I was part of a couple of years ago. And, uh, and the book, that, the story that I'm going to read you is called An Absolutely Definitely True Story by Matt Stanton. Get comfy. Enjoy. My name is Matt, and this is a true story. You might be tempted not to believe me. All the other stories in this book are made up, after all, but not this story. I'll warn you, some parts of what you are about to read might seem unbelievable. But you have to remember, unbelievable things happen all the time. You want an example? Aeroplanes. Aeroplanes can fly. Have you ever thought about that? Not paper aeroplanes. Giant steel boxes filled with hundreds of people just float up in the air above our heads. It happens hundreds of times every day. That is unbelievable. Or what about snails? Did you know that they have teeth? Well, they do. And not just a couple either. 14,000 Yes, you heard that right. The snail in your backyard has 14,000 teeth. Unbelievable, but still true. So I want you to remember this, because I'm about to tell you an absolutely, definitely true story about a pig. Superhero. Called Super Duper Pig. Super Duper Pig looks like a normal pig. You know, she's pink with a squishy tummy. She doesn't dress like a normal pig, though. Super Duper Pig needs to always be in disguise. So she wears a mask and a cape, because that's what superheroes wear. Yeah, yeah, I know, except for Iron Man, Superman, Spider-Man, Thor, The Incredible Hulk, Supergirl, Captain America, Flash, Hawkeye, Aquaman, Cyborg, Ant-Man, or Black Widow. There are actually very few superheroes who wear both a mask and a cape, as it turns out. Basically, she's dressed like Batman, except Batman isn't a pig. Or a bat, he's a guy dressed up as a bat. Super Duper Pig is a pig dressed up as a Super Duper Pig. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked with all the details. Stop trying to distract me. Your job is to hear this true story. My job is to tell it. Now, where was I? Oh yes, Super Duper Pig had a problem. She was sitting in her classroom one day, what? What's wrong with that? Are you surprised that a pig is going to school? Because that's not weird. Everyone has a right to an education. It wasn't a whole class full of pigs either before you asked that question. That would be ridiculous. It was a classroom full of completely normal kids with a perfectly human teacher and a superhero pig. Doing maths. That's when Super Duper Pig got a text on her mobile phone. The lawyers won't let me tell you which sort of phone it is, but uh, you know the one. The, the best one. We understand each other about that, right? Right? Help needed urgently, read the text. It was from the Prime Minister. The little piggy hairs on the back of Super Duper Pete's neck stood on end. The Prime Minister always added emojis to the ends of his texts, but not this time. Something must be really wrong. Why would there be no emojis? This must be Super Duper Pig's big problem, right? No, it wasn't. The real problem was much bigger. You see, Super Duper Pig's teacher busted her with her phone. Then she confiscated it. And then she put Super Duper Pig on detention with that kid Lee. He's the one who always called her Super Pooper Pig. You have no idea how much she hated that guy. What did you do, Super Pooper Pig? Lee whispered. None of your business, Lee Evil, Super Duper Pig replied. She was good at a great many things, but coming up with comebacks was not one of them. To be fair though, she was in a bit of a pickle. She had to work out how to get out of detention and then go to Parliament House to save the Prime Minister, and she wasn't supposed to do all and she was supposed to do all of that without her phone. There was only one option, of course. Super Duper Pig decided to use her secret signal to get a message to her sidekick to come and rescue her from detention. 
she pulled a pink balloon out of her cape pocket. All capes should come with pockets. It's so practical. She blew it up, but didn't tie it. Then, when the teacher wasn't looking, she let it go, and it went shooting out of the window, propelled by one of the best balloon farts she'd ever heard. It worked. Four and a half minutes later, detention was suddenly interrupted by the arrival of an acrobatic frog called Barry jumping through the window. Oh, you think that's unbelievable, do you? Well, it's not. I'll tell you what is unbelievable. Baked beans. Baked beans are unbelievable. They're not actually baked. They're stewed. So just shh, stop interrupting. Barry did a double layout with a half twist. You can see that on YouTube. Across the front of the classroom, leaving the teacher and Lee so dumbfounded that their mouth stayed as open as a 24 hour 7-Eleven. Thanks, Barry, yelled Super Duper Pig, quickly vaulting her wobbly bottom out of the classroom window so that she could go save the Prime Minister. It was a long way from her school to Parliament House, way too far to run. So of course Super Duper Pig headed to the parking lot to grab her turbocharged tricycle, wouldn't you? Oh no, I hate it when this happens, she said when she found her tricycle. When what happens? Barry asked. When this happens, Super Duper Pig exclaimed. What's this? What's what? I don't know. This, said Barry. Super Duper Pig looked at him like he was a very stupid frog. Someone has stolen one of my wheels, see? She pointed at her tricycle. My turbocharged tricycle only has two wheels. Well, Barry thought for a moment. Then it's not a tricycle, is it? It is a tricycle. It's a tricycle missing a wheel, the pig explained. Tricycles have three wheels, the frog says. This is a bicycle. Super duper pig had had about enough of this frog explaining. Fine, she said. Have it your way. Now it's a bicycle. Yeah, said Barry. So what's the problem? People ride bicycles all the time. If there was a shop where you could take your sidekick and get him upgraded for a better sidekick, then Super Duper Pig would have run there faster than you could say empty-headed amphibian. Of course, there isn't a shop like that, and given that this is a true story, I'm not about to go and make one up. Instead, Super Duper Pig explained that they needed to take public transport to Parliament House. Unfortunately, there was track work on the train line, so Super Duper Pig and Barry soon found themselves in a packed carriage going so slowly that they watched a snail overtake them outside the window. Should we uh, text the Prime Minister and let him know we're stuck in traffic? said Barry. Teacher took my phone, said Super Duper Pig. We're going to have to rescue my phone after we rescue the Prime Minister. I was going to rescue my phone before I rescued the Prime Minister, but there are people reading this story and I don't want to look bad. People can be so judgy, isn't that the truth? Super Duper Pig wasn't one to be slowed down by a sluggish public transport system, so she gestured for Barry to follow her. Then she opened a window, squeezed through the gap, and climbed onto the roof. The frog followed. Quick note, your mum wanted me to remind you not to climb onto the roof of a moving train because it's dangerous. Of course, you're not going to do that because you're not a stupid head. But, well, you know your mum. Super Duper Pig and Barry ran along the roof of the train just as it passed the track work and started moving again. As they picked up speed, the wind blew Super Duper Pig's little piggy hairs and... Oh, hang on a minute. You've got that look in your eyes. You've stopped believing me again. I did tell you it was gonna get difficult, but it seems like a superhero pig and her sidekick frog running along the top of a moving train is about as far as your belief will stretch, huh? Well, what if I told you that bananas are actually berries? Sound unbelievable? Well, it's true. Bananas are a type of berry. And what if I told you that strawberries are not berries? Yes, yes, I know. They have the word berry in their name, but it's wrong. They're not berries, or made of straw for that matter. Whoever came up with the name strawberry was definitely having a laugh. But you still believed them, didn't you? Well, the least you could do is believe me when I tell you that Super Duper Pig and Barry are running along the top of a moving train when back splat flutter, ugh, for tweak, squat, they collided with a flock of daredevil pigeons racing each other blindfolded. 
Suddenly, Super Duper Pig had a mouthful of pigeon feathers, and Barry was stuck to the tummy of one of the birds and being lifted up into the air by a carrier pigeon. At least it enabled him to spot Parliament House with his bird's eye view and point Super Duper Pig in the right direction. Finally, they arrived at Parliament House and everything was going crazy. There were people in suits running everywhere and yelling things like, We've lost the Prime Minister! And, Who's going to run the country? And, Did anyone see last night's episode of Bondi Vet? Amongst all the commotion, Super Duper Pig and Barry were able to run into the lobby, up the stairs and down the corridor with all the paintings of old Prime Ministers in it. I know you're probably asking, how did, Super du how did a superhero pig and a frog manage to get into Parliament House undetected? And all I have to say about that is, one, they're superheroes, two, they're amazing, and three, this is a true story, so trust me, okay? Look at this, said Super Duper Pig. She pointed to a trail of slime leading out of the House of Representatives and up the stairs towards the roof. Let's go, Barry. Whoever has kidnapped the Prime Minister has gone this way. She was right, too. When they reached the sunbaking section of the Parliament House roof, have you ever wondered why politicians are so well tanned? They found the villain of this very true story. It was a giant snail with 4,000 teeth called Lee. Stop right there, Super Duper Pig called out. Lee, the evil all snail, stopped in his slippery track. As he turned around, they could see the Prime Minister's legs sticking out of a gap in his shell. Where do you think you're going? I'm taking the Prime Minister away on my... plane, said Lee the Evil Snail. They looked up, and sure enough, there was a giant steel box floating above their heads. It really is unbelievable that that thing can fly, Barry said. Oh, don't give me that look. You don't believe that this can be true? Is that because you think that I'm just using things from earlier on in the story, like snails and planes and Lee, to finish the short story. Well, it's it's a coincidence, okay? Just a coincidence. They do happen, you know. You leave the storytelling to me, and I'll leave the listening to you. Deal? Good. Because you need to find out how they stopped Lee the evil snail. And I'm going to tell you how in a minute. They... Um, well, how are we going to stop Lee the Evil Snail? Barry asked. It's a question we're all asking, isn't it? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I haven't been asking it. I know how this story ends. Because it's true, of course. I'm just about to tell you. Suddenly, Super Duper Pig remembered what it was that would stop Lee the Evil Snail. Quick, Barry! Pass me that banana, Super Duper Pig called out. What banana? Barry asked. The one from earlier in the story. Snails are allergic to bananas and strawberries. Pass me the strawberries too. So Barry grabbed the bananas and strawberries from earlier in the story. Where was I? I lost my spot. So Barry grabbed the bananas and, stories from, uh, and strawberries from earlier in the story and Super Duper Pig threw them at Lee the Evil Snail until he let the Prime Minister go and fell off the roof of Parliament House. Thank you very much, Super Duper Pig, said the Prime Minister as he tried to wipe the slime off his very expensive suit. I think that's going to need to be dry cleaned, Barry suggested. Good point, said the Prime Minister. Now, I need to give you a reward for saving the country. What would you like? You can have anything in the world. A new phone, please, said Super Duper Pig. The lawyers won't let me say which kind, but you know the one, right? Right. I know the one, said the Prime Minister, and he winked. Don't you want to get a new tricycle? Barry mumbled. Instead of answering that question, they all linked arms and went skipping back into Parliament House together. And there we have it. That is the happy ending of the absolutely, definitely true story about the pig superhero called Super Duper Pig. Now, before you go, I do know what you're thinking. I can see the question in your eyes. You want to ask me, Matt, how did you know that snails are allergic to bananas and strawberries? Good question. I can see why you would ask that. I hate stories with unresolved endings as much as the next person, so I'm happy to answer it. But let's just keep this between us, though, okay? Because 
can I be honest with you? That bit about snails being allergic to bananas and strawberries. I made that bit up. The end. I hope you enjoyed our short story today. I will see you back here tomorrow. See you guys.